All right, recording. Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out the newly released Cutefish OS. Now we've taken a look at Cutefish a couple different times on this channel, uh, focusing on their desktop environment on either Manjaro or an Arch-based system. But as of today, you can actually download their Cutefish OS. Honestly, I don't know too much about it, so this is kind of a uh, first look, first, first impressions type video. Uh, unfortunately, I'm having to do this on a virtual machine, so this isn't going to be on physical hardware. With that said, this is our Welcome to Cutefish installer. I just booted it into the ISO. It looks very familiar. I'm not going to get too into the UI yet. We're just going to quickly run through this. Here we have American English selected. You could go ahead and go to About, Donate, Cutefish to Support, and Known Issues. If I go ahead and click on about, this is a Calamaris installer. You can see the version number, it's for Cutefish OS, and some other information here. So with that, let's go ahead and just proceed with the installation. I'm in Los Angeles, default, yes. Let's go ahead and erase this entire disk. We can see that it's using BetterFS as the default file system, so that's pretty cool. Let's go next, I'm gonna fill this out real quick. All right, and once this is filled out, let's go ahead and hit next. We have our summary, let's install it and install now you can see right there, Cutefish OS version 0.5. So let's install it. All right, and our installation is complete. One thing I noticed during the installation process, they didn't really have a slideshow or anything to go with Calamaris. They're probably gonna add that later, but it was just a white screen. So let's go ahead and make sure restart now is selected, hit done and restart our operating system. All right, we're booting into Cutefish OS. You can see their little uh, distribution splash screen there. And unfortunately, being that I'm in a virtual machine, the resolution isn't quite there yet, but very nice login screen. Ah, oh, what do you mean? And right here is when I ran into my uh, second issue. So first, not being able to actually boot this on hardware. Second, for some reason, my password just didn't work. And I reinstalled it, tried it again, didn't work. So th this time I selected the little box to do an automated login, and now we are in. Resolution's still a little screwed up, but it's giving me the option to choose a light or dark theme. Um, let's go ahead and stick with light for now. We'll go next and loading. So welcome to Cutefish. It says starting now, that's not a button and here we go. So let's change this resolution. Let's drop into settings here real quick. Go over to display, pump this up to 1080p. There we go, looking better. So. Now we are actually in and this is installed. So first things first, I do think this is either based on a Debian or Ubuntu, but the main thing is, and probably, well, in my opinion, one of the more important things is, let's see what NeoFetch says. So first let's see if it actually already has it. So NeoFetch, and it does. It does look like it's based on just straight Debian. So that's a cool decision that they didn't go off of Ubuntu like every other uh, Debian distro out there. This is built off of Debian 11 Bullseye with the 5.10 kernel. Looks like there are about 1100 packages. It's using Bashed. Uh, we have the Cutefish desktop environment running off of Kwin. Cutefish is a very heavy, not a direct fork, but they use a lot of the KDE Plasma code to make this, and that's not as apparent now as it was in earlier versions, but they're using a Kwin for their window manager. You can see some of the icons. The terminal is the Cutefish terminal. And then right here, it's actually pretty good on the resource consumption. We're using just about 750 megabytes of RAM out of the nine gigabytes I went ahead and gave this system. Up here on the top bar, you can see I have a button for terminal here. It's That's the open window. It's not minimizing it or anything like that. If I do actually minimize it, it goes away up here. I have to open it up from the dock. I'm pretty sure some applications have a global menu, but that still might not be completely functional. Uh, you can maximize, minimize, and right here, let's see what this plus button does. Oh, so that just opens a new tab within the acute fish terminal. So over here we have our time. If I go ahead and click on that, uh, nothing happens as of yet. Uh, we have input method selection. If I click that, nothing happens. If I click the power button, something happens. So here's where we can change it between light and dark mode, our Wi-Fi. Uh, power and quick setting to our well quick little button that will take us to our settings This is a shortcut to the LAN or the WLAN settings and here we have Ethernet We could change our display you guys kind of saw this when I went in they have a scaling So let's go ahead and put it to 
Oh, relogin. I'm not even going to try that. Let's put it back to 100. Uh, we have appearance here, so this is the light and dark. We can choose our accent color. So let's say I wanted it to be purple, and you can see some of these switches change over. Additionally, we have some fonts. We have our background settings, and they do feature some pretty nice backgrounds. Most of them are following the same kind of vibe, except for this one with the beta fish. Uh, if we go over to dock, you can change the positioning. So I could throw it over on the left, bottom, and then right. And then we have our sizes here. So you can make it huge if you wanted to which that's not too huge, but let's keep it at medium. And you have the uh, always show, always hide, and smart hide. So smart hide is if a window gets a little bit too close to it, the dock will actually hide itself. Uh, we have user settings, mouse settings. If I scroll down here, uh, well, we can change to like cute fish light, for example, and cute fish dark. I actually like that. Let's go ahead and keep that. Uh, we have our time and date settings, language options, power options, so we have power save mode and performance mode, and then we have about, which this is telling us our system version is 0.5, running on the 64-bit uh, system, like I said, it's the 5.10 kernel, and you saw all that other information there. So with the settings ran down, we can then open up Launcher, for example. This is gonna be our application launcher, so we can see everything that is on our system, that is currently not in our dock. So we have Archive Manager, Calculator, it does feature the Chromium web browser. Uh, it looks like it uh, has some of the applications that are included in just vanilla Debian. We have our File Manager, our Image Viewer, Input Method. Uh, we have a Package Installer application, Screenshot, Settings, System Monitor, Terminal, Video Player. Let's go ahead and open up our System Monitor to see some of the performance before I start opening up too many things here. Uh, if I go over to Resources, this looks like just standard GNOME system monitor. I can see right here, it's like, it. it this is the GNOME system monitor, but the uh, they have a title bar here instead of it integrated like it is on GNOME, so that looks kind of weird at the moment. So they should probably switch that out with something else. Uh, the CPU is running okay. It's keeping under 20% overall. Uh, cores are zero to 2% with the occasional spike and RAM has jumped up to 1.1 gigabytes as I've been opening things and doing some stuff within the system. So closing that out, let's check out our file manager, see if there's any major differences. Not really compared to the previous versions we looked at, it's basically the same layout, same look, but we have our global menu up here that is integrated with their built-in applications. So I could like do new folder, call it new folder, and you can see that get added there. You could also do edit, cut, copy, paste. I have help here so I can see about and get some information maybe on their uh, actual file application, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be uh, showing up for us. So, oh well. We have properties. So this is the properties of this directory. You can see the location, the modified, all that stuff. So on this doc here, we have Chromium. I'll open that up in just a sec. Uh, let's see what this Debian package installer is. Oh, so this is just a basic thing to install dev packages. It probably uses the dpkg or whatever command within a GUI utility. So then we have Chromium. So let's go ahead and open that up. And again with the uh, title bar integration, that's not looking too good, but they do have the global menu working within Chromium, so that is nice. We have file, so we can open new tabs through here, go through our history, tools, people. So if I go tools and extensions, for example, it's going to open up extensions within Chromium. And then right here we have some, uh, looks like Debian.org links within Chromium. One thing, if we go over to the Cutefish website, now I'm not too impressed with this thus far, as, as you can probably tell by the experience we're having, but this is their very first publicly available beta release. So we can't be too picky as of yet. If we go over to their Cutefish OS website, you can see make a better desktop OS. It's supposed to be getting released here within the next couple hours. So even before the release, hopefully some of these things that I'm uh, running into have been fixed by then. But if you need any information or anything, you'd always go over to the Cutefish forum. And here's where you could go ahead and get help, get information. If you go over to announcements, you can see their change logs. And when it is published, I'll go ahead and link to the 0.5 change log down below. 
but it is cool that this is an actual Linux distribution now that you can install with an ISO file instead of just being a thing you have to install on top of Arch. Overall, it is super beautiful. I'm really excited for the development long term and to see where this project is going to be going. At the moment, when it comes to using it every day, it is not there yet. I would not be able to actually use this. Um, before we end here, let's go ahead and install just an app, random application, just to see how the buttons work and to see how that integrates in our system. So let's do sudo apt install, and let's go ahead and grab GIMP. This should be in these repositories. So let's grab it. It's pulling everything from the Debian Bullseye repositories. All right, so that has installed. So if we go ahead and go open our launcher, we should have GIMP in here. And there it is. And you can see the icons. It does pretty well pulling different icons in this kind of mobile friendly look they're going for. So let's go ahead and open that up and see how it looks with the title bars and the overall integration. The uh, global menu is not integrated in this. That's not too much of a surprise. So we can go ahead and make it bigger. It looks like all the uh, buttons are looking okay. A lot of the times with, um, like I know with something like Deepin, for example, if you open up applications like this or like Caden Live or something like that, the buttons look weird and like the you can't really see the icons very well. But th this seems to uh, do fairly well even with these uh, small icons throughout the application. So again, I'm looking forward to uh, development. Definitely if there are any major improvements or something needs to be covered, we will be making a video. So make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell if you are into more cute fish updates or anything else to do with Linux tech, anything like that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. With that, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mac, Kyle, and Timo Anthony. And big thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Your support is truly humbling. It means a lot to me if you're interested in supporting the channel. You hit the join button down below or go to the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, um, I'm going to upload this video. So this might not be available yet, but I will leave links. And when it is, you could go ahead and play with it and test it out if you would like to. So with all of that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.